Good evening, everyone. Welcome to North City Church Saturate Virtual Revival. My name is Bernadette Jones. I am part of the teaching team here at North City Church, and a uh, pastor has asked me to teach as we kick off our um, virtual revival for this week. It will be um, every night this week, well, Saturday, Sunday night, tonight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Go to North City Church Facebook page to make sure you guys are tuned in because you don't want to miss the awesome speakers that are lined up for this week and what God has for you. So before we dive in, I want to pray real quick. Father, we thank you to be able to come together to learn of you, to learn of your word. Father, as we have this virtual revival and we're able to not just meet in a group, Father, but meet together. I pray that the word that is um, heard today, Father, that we won't just hear it where it goes in one ear and out the other, but Father, we will take it in. We will take it into our hearts and it will fall on good ground and we won't just hear the word, Father, but we will do what it is you have called and what you were uh, instructing us to do. Father, and it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, so what we're going to talk about tonight, um, it is saturate, and I want to talk about being saturated in the word. Because um, if you've been at North City Church or you've heard Pastor Doc or Pastor Mary um, for any extended period of time, you hear them say all the time, um, get this word in you, get this word in you, get this word in you. And I think so often we just think Sundays, but they're not just talking about Sundays. They're talking about every day. Get the word of God in you every single day. Be saturated with the word. And I know most of us kind of have a general idea of what saturation is, but I just kind of want to give the definition of it. So to saturate is to cause something to become thoroughly soaked with liquid so that no more can be absorbed. And it's not just a one-time thing. We don't just wait for a conference or wait for a revival to be saturated and then that's it. It's not a one-time event. Um, you don't have to wait till you get to, to a conference. This can be an everyday thing, especially when it comes to the word. And I want to discuss some of the benefits of being saturated and how, how that helps us in our walk. And the first thing I want to highlight is it helps build your faith. So if you're taking notes, the first point is it helps build your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This isn't just a one time you heard it. This is a continual hearing of God's word, continually listening to the word, not just you heard it, you heard it on Sunday because you still have to go throughout the rest of your week. So it's not, oh, I heard it that one time on Sunday. This is continually. Are you continually hearing the word? Are you continually reading the word? Go back and listen to the sermon that was preached on Sunday. When you read the word daily, read it out loud to yourself so you can hear yourself saying it. Don't just sit there quietly. Read it to your kids. Have your kids read it to you. You want to continually be hearing the word of God on a daily basis because that's how faith comes. Your faith is built by that continually hearing, that continually being in the word will build your faith, being saturated in the word will help build your faith. And then the second um, thing I want to point out, our second point is what is in you is coming out. It's coming out of your mouth. Matthew um, 12, 34, and this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to the religious leaders, and he says, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're getting the word in you, the word is what's going to come out of you. And if you're continually getting the word in you, not just like I said, you know, you heard it on Sunday and it was that one time because you can hear it on Sunday. It'll dwindle by Monday. And then when Tuesday hits, it's you're running on empty and you're waiting until Wednesday or you're waiting again until Sunday or whatever the next big, big conference or thing is. But it's that continual, like I said, you want to continually be in the word, continually saturate in the word 
to build your faith up because we also know that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And what is in you is coming out. So if you're speaking life and you're speaking the word, you want to get the word in you. So the word is what's coming out of your mouth. And then also um, to be transformed. Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, how do I transform my mind? Spending time in the word daily. Daily spending time in God's, in God's word is how you're going to be transformed. And it's by the renewing of your mind. Your thinking is transformed. What you're saying is transformed because you're speaking life. And we know God's word is life. So you're going to be speaking that when you start getting the word in you and you start spending that daily time and start being saturated in God's word, just continually hearing it. Like I said, whether it's you're reading the word, you're hearing a sermon, just continually faith, faith filled word that lines up with the Bible, teachings that line up with the word of God. And then to know God's will, his will is his word. You know, people will say, well, God is mysterious and he works in mysterious ways, but his word tells us his ways. And the one scripture I want to go to um, for that, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verses um, 10 through 12. And it reads, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So it says God has revealed things to us. He reveals them. Verse 11, for what man knows the things of God except the spirit of man which is in him. Now it's just talking about the man, your natural side of you. So even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So it says, the spirit of God knows the things of God and we have the spirit of God. So therefore we know the things of God and we know the things of God through his word. He tells us in his word what his will is. So by spending time in the word, you can know the will of God. So there's no reason you can say, or even in your prayer life, it should not be God if it's your will. You should be praying knowing it is his will for you to be healed, knowing it is his will. Know it and know it. You can back it up with scripture because the word says you stand on that promise and knowing what God's will is because his will is his word. And if you don't know his will, I would encourage you to get in his word. And start seeing the things that he says you can have. Because there's a lot of promises in there that he says you can have. And you can know with assurance. Because God said it. And I'm his child. Through a relationship with Jesus Christ. I can have it. And you can stand firm on that. And then the next point I want to go into as far as um, being saturated in the word. Is it will keep you from sin. And Psalms 119 verses 10 and 11. And it says, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments, which are taught in his word. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And I know when we think of sin, we think of what we call the big stuff. You know, the cursing, drinking, fornication, adultery. That's what we think of. Typically, when it comes to when we think of sin, but there's also fear, worry, stress, because God says repeatedly in his word, do not fear. He says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. He says, but a power, love and a sound mind. So when you're in fear, you're in sin. When you're in worry, you're in sin. When you're stressing over something, you're in sin. So that is still, that is still sin. But when you're filled with the word and you're building your faith through the word, you're walking in faith. You're not walking in fear. You're walking in that confidence of what the word says. And so when even people try to talk fear around you, 
you're, you don't accept that. No, no, no. That's, this is what the word says. God says, do not fear. Because even with like, I don't watch the news. I am aware of what's going on in the world, but I do not watch the news because the news will have you in fear and afraid. And it's like, I don't care what's going on. God is over everything. He's a healer. He heals. He doesn't cause sickness. He doesn't cause disease. He is a healer. He is a provider. That is what the word says that he is. And that actually brings me into my next point of you want to get attached in the word so you can fight the devil. Because we fight the devil with the word. We fight him with the word. Even Jesus, we talk about Jesus being our example. And I want to read in Luke 4, 1 through 13, when Jesus was tempted. And it shows even how Jesus fought the devil when he came at him with temptation. And verse 1 says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to, be, to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you in their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over to you to keep you. And that is Satan talking. When Satan, that is Satan saying it is written. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And so you see here, even when the devil was talking to Jesus, Jesus didn't just sit there quiet and not say anything. No, Jesus came back with, it is written. This is what the word of God says. And Satan didn't just quit after the first time. He hit him three times. And all three times, Jesus came back and said, it is written. It is written. It is written. This is what the word says. When Satan comes at you with things, you need to tell him, it is written. This is what God says. This is what the word says. This is what God says I can have. I'm not sick. I'm healed. When Satan tries to bring you sickness, no, I'm healed. I, I'm not accepting this sickness you're trying to bring to me. I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. The word says I am healed. And you stand on that and you speak the word and you talk back to him. Satan's a bully. He's going to talk to you. And you talk right back to him with what the word of God says, because the word is the authority. And, you know, most of us know, and Satan will come at you with half of what the word says. That's why you need to know it. You need to know for yourself what the word says. I don't care how popular somebody is. You need to know what the word says, because there's a lot of popular people out there. And it doesn't, whether, it doesn't matter whether they're popular or not popular. If it lines up with the word, it's true. If what they say does not line up with the word, you don't accept that. You don't take that as truth. You go check it for yourself. Be like, okay, that sounds a little off. Let me go look that up. Let me go find the scripture on that. And you make sure it lines up before you share it. <laughs> Especially as a believer, you want to make sure what you're sharing lines up with the word of God. Because I've heard a lot of, you know, popular people say, well, you know, God will put you through a storm or God will cause the mountain to be in front of you. And there's nowhere in scripture where it says God will cause a storm or put a mountain in front of you. 
His word says, speak to the mountain and it will be removed. Jesus rebuked a storm. So he's not going to cause a storm and then turn around and rebuke it. That, that doesn't make sense. And in a minute, I'm going to jump to a, um, show you a scripture that, that shows that. But, and I know many of us, if you've been in church for any amount of time or you've heard the phrase, you know, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And we've heard that, but that's only half of that scripture because the power is in the first part. So it's like, we know, okay, resist the devil and he will flee from you, but you have a lot of people who know that in their head, but they don't know how to fight. So they're not, they don't have that victorious life. You know, they'll say, oh, the devil's been whooping on me. We'll fight him back. That's what resist means. It means to push back, to fight back. But the f first part of that says, um, therefore, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And part of submitting to God is submitting to his word. Submitting to what his word says and being obedient to his word. And um, look at Mark chapter 3, verse 22 through 25. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Of course, Jesus not is got, not going to cause something to happen to you and then turn around and take it off of you. That's not, that's not how he works. And he's talking to the religious leaders here and says, And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said he has Beelzebul and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons Jesus had just cast a demon out of somebody it says so he called them to himself and said to them in parables how can Satan cast out Satan if a kingdom is divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand and if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand it's the same thing when it comes to the kingdom of God if he's going to if you're saying God is causing something to happen and then he's going to not do it or fix it, that's a divided kingdom. It can't stand. Just like he said here, Satan's not going to, you know, demon possess somebody and then turn around and cast out the demon. That's working against itself. God's not going to put an obstacle in front of you and then turn around and take it away. No, he tells you how to get rid of the obstacle. Satan is the one who will cause the mountain. Satan is the one who will cause the storm. And the word says, if you speak to the mountain, it will be removed. It doesn't say climb the mountain, go around the mountain, talk about the mountain, pray about the mountain, speak to the mountain and the mountain will be removed. He's not going to put it in your, in your way. He says, speak to it because that is coming from Satan. That is coming from the devil. And um, Jeremiah 29, 11 states, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So God's not going to say, I have this hope, I have this future for you, and it's great, but decide halfway through your life, you know what, I changed my mind, I'm just going to go ahead and call you home. He doesn't kill people. So even as we see death happening, it's not... Oh, well, God just wanted another flower for his garden or, you know, God just wanted an angel. He wanted to bring them home. No, he has a plan and a purpose. And if you have not fulfilled that plan and that purpose, there's no need for you to go to heaven or go back home, especially as a believer. If it's sickness you're dying from, Satan, cancer, Satan, an accident, Satan. It's not God. Well, God caused this accident. So he could get my attention. No, that's not how he operates. God did not cause this virus to get our attention. No, that's not how he operates. He's not going to kill thousands of people so people can come to him. That's not how he operates. Satan will kill thousands of people to get rid of people. Because even in every movie that you see, the bad guys always kill people who are on their team. For no reason at all. That's just how the enemy works even in a movie if it works that way why would you assume god who you say is good and his word says he is good and you say and we say that all the time god is good god is good but yet somehow he went against his good nature and caused something bad to happen that's not what the word says. That's why you need to be in the word. That's why you need to be saturated with the word. That's why you need to be firm in the word because you need to know what this word says. 
And through knowing the word is how you will know the character of God. And then I know some people say, well, what about Job? Job was written from Job's perspective. And I think a lot of times when we read the Old Testament, we read it from the perspective of the New Testament. And what do I mean by that? Is in the New Testament, Jesus had died, risen from the dead. So they were more aware of the things Satan did. They had the Holy Spirit. They had a lot of insight that people of the Old Testament didn't have. So the Old Testament saints believed everything came from God. Everything. But even if you look at Job chapter 3, verse 25, Job says, the very thing I feared came upon me. Now think about everything that happened to Job. He said, the thing I feared came upon me. But there are also several times in the Old Testament where God tells his people, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. And dismayed means to be distressed. So even Job knowing what the Old Testament scripture said, knowing that God says, do not fear. So to fear puts you in disobedience. It also opens the door to the enemy. So when you fear for your children, you're opening the door for Satan to do exactly what you're afraid of. When you fear for your health, you're opening the door for Satan to, to, to bring that sickness or whatever it is to you. Fear opens the door to Satan. And several times in scripture, God says, do not fear. That's why you need to get in the word and build up your faith. So you will not be in fear. And you do it before things like this, before things like coronavirus happen. Because all you're going to get bombarded with is fear. Fear, 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 gloom. That's what you're going to get hit with. And so it's a little bit harder in times of crisis. I'm not saying it's not impossible. To try and build your faith up because you have to intentionally tune everything out and conversations with people when they start hitting that direction of, well, you don't know. And God, you'd be like, mm, right there. Okay, no, that's not of God. That's not what scripture says. And it's even more of a, a fight to build it. So even when this is over, you still want to make sure you're building your faith up by spending time in the word, getting saturated in the word, getting it in you, reading it and not just be like, I read it today and make it a check mark off your list. Really dissect it. Look at who's talking. Who are they talking to? Kind of ask those questions. What is the, the context of this? Get an understanding, even with your kids. Ask your kids to explain to you what was just read. Make sure they understand it, because if they understand, it'll help get inside of them. Um, when I worked at a daycare several years ago, I worked in a Christian daycare and I kind of got to do a lot of my own thing for the summer program. And one thing I did with my kids was after breakfast, we would sit in a circle and I had various ages. So those who could read would, we'd read the Bible together and they would read about five or six scriptures. And then they had to tell me what they just read, because sometimes we read things and someone can ask you a question and you're just like, I have no idea because you weren't paying attention to what you were reading. So I'd have them tell me, explain to me, you know, who was talking? What did you just read? What is it talking about? And they would explain it back to me. And they loved it. They loved that time. I remember one little girl had a doctor's appointment and she was going to miss it. And she was like, Miss Jones, can, can we do Bible study after I get back? I'm like, no, we're still going to do it, but we can do an, another one. So, you know, you can participate. And she absolutely loved it. But you want to make sure to, even as you as an adult are reading it, do you understand what you're reading? Read it with the Holy Spirit. Make sure, like I said, you understand who's talking. Who are they talking to? What is the context of this scripture? Don't just take half things and don't walk away confused. You want to make sure you understand it. Because the words you don't understand, Satan will grab from you. He'll snatch it. But you want to make sure you understand, ask questions, whether you, you know, can ask the Holy Spirit or you can ask your pastor or your spiritual leader or someone, you know, who is a faith walker, who is walking in this word and walking in faith to be like, hey, I read something and I don't quite understand it. Can you can you explain it to me? Can you help me understand um, what what is being said or what is meant by that? So you want to make sure you have an understanding of the word as well. And at the same time, Jesus clearly says 
that he came to bring life. He doesn't say, I came to bring life and death and destruction. He says, I came to bring life. So why does every time something bad happens, we blame God? Or say, oh, God is doing something. Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So why do we say that? Because we're not, we don't know the word. We know it in our head, but we don't know it in our hearts. And when you know it in your head, it's something that's called mental ascent. So it's like, you know it here, but when it comes that trying time, when that time of, you know, things start to hit, and I, like I said earlier, what's in you comes out, that means that's really what's in you. What is really in you is your belief that God is causing all these things to happen. Your belief is that this is God. Your belief is not God came that I may have life, and if I'm experiencing death, then that came from Satan. And so you make sure you want to, you want to, um, make sure you know that. Because even scripture says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus came so we can have life. So when you're seeing death and you're seeing destruction, you know that's Satan. You know that's not God. You know that is Satan. And that's where I said that word comes in. When you start to see things happen, you start rebuking Satan. You don't sit and let it happen and watch it happen. You, you, you put the word on it. You put the word on those, those situations. When sickness tries to hit your body, you put the word on it. You plead the blood. I am healed by the stripes. I am healed. Because you are healed. Satan's trying to give you something. And here's where we go wrong. And um, we accept it. Because when you say, I am sick, you've now taken that into your possession. You've taken whatever sickness has come, has tried to come against you. You've now accepted that. But when you say, I am healed, you're holding on to your healing. Because when you became a believer, you healed. Healing is part of that. And so you receive that. But Satan will try to switch you and be like, you know what? Give me your healing and I'll give you sickness. So even when you start to start to get things and you start to get start to feel that come apart, mm -mm, I'm I'm healed. I'm covered in the blood. I'm 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 redeemed. I'm healed. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And part of that too is um, even if I was as I was preparing earlier today, something the Lord spoke to me too was, don't ask God to heal you. He healed you on the cross. So we use our authority, and, and I'm saying not period, because I understand as as we grow um, in our in our walk, we learn how to walk in authority. So there's nothing wrong with you know asking God to heal you. But I'm saying as you grow, as you get in the word, and as you start to learn authority, you start to rebuke Satan because you have that authority because you're already healed because we have dominion over him. We have authority over him. So even as things arise, you start to rebuke Mm -mm, Satan, get your hands off me. I'm healed. I'm covering the blood. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now. And you put that authority in your voice and put what the word says on it. And then the last thing I want to point out is uh, the last scripture I want to go through is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. I'm going to read 10 through 12 and then I want to highlight um, 16 and 17. And if my device will work. All right. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, brother, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may, that you, excuse me, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. And then I want to jump down to verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And how did we say faith comes? Faith comes by hearing. By hearing what? The word of God. So when you're continually hearing the word of God every day, you've got your shield of faith up. 
and we have to put on the armor of God. So we, it is our responsibility to put up that shield of faith. So 16, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we have that shield of faith by continually hearing his word. That's how we build up our faith. And that's how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing the word. And then the word of God is also a sword. So we not only protect ourselves, but we attack Satan with the word. And we do that daily, daily spending time in the word, daily listening to faith-filled teaching, daily getting into the word, seeing what the word says, standing on the word, standing on the promises of God, standing on what the word of God says, studying the word. Don't just kind of skim over it or make that, oh, well, I did that today. I read my Bible today. Okay, but what did you walk away with? Don't make it a check on your to-do list. Actually spend time in the word. How can I apply this to my life? Who is talking here? What promises can I have as a believer? Because even as, as you have it, you can be a witness and a minister to so many others. So it's not even just about you. It's about those you come in interaction with. Because even, remember when we were talking about Job, and Job said the thing he feared came upon him, that did not just affect Job. That affected his children, because his children died. And who knows if, you know, they had families, but it wasn't just Job in and of himself and nobody else was affected. That fear affected other people's lives, which I'm sure had an impact on other people's lives. And so even at that, yes, we see where Job blamed God, but we know better. We know better. We know that fear is not of God. We know that fear opens the door to the devil. So even in when we're dealing stuff, you don't talk in fear because fear is not of God. And you don't even say, well, God brought this up. That's not in his nature. According to the word, that's not in his nature. And you don't accept it. What I mean by accepting it is if you're in a conversation with someone and someone says it and you don't say anything, you've accepted it. It's just like, you know, your parents kind of teach you if you're watching somebody get bullied, you are you might as well be bullying them as well. If you're watching them and you don't say anything, if you don't stand up and say something or, you know, let a teacher know, you're pretty much participating in that person being bullied. Well, take it out of the physical realm and look at the spiritual realm. God uses people and Satan uses people. And that spirit knows your spirit. So it knows you're a child of God. And it knows the things that come with your words. It knows that life and death are in the power of the tongue. So if you're there and you're listening to death, are you going to say anything and speak life back? Or are you just going to accept it? Because what happens when we don't rebuke that? It'll get in you and you'll start to kind of mull it over in your head and go over it. And the next thing you know, it's in you, which is why you need to be filled with the word every single day. It's why you need to be saturated with the word every single day. So there's no room for anything else to get in you because when you're soaked and you're saturated with the word, you're, you're filled. It's, it's oozing. It's coming out. It's overflowing. There's no room for anything else. But as you go through your day, you, you use that and it gets, gets depleted and it gets slower because you're using your faith. So you've got it every day. Okay, let me fill back up. Let me fill back up with the word because you're going to use it just like, and that's why I say it's not a one day a week thing. It's not just Sundays. It's not just when we have a conference and have a revival. Yes, they're good. Don't get me wrong. Yes, they're good, but you've got to continue in it. When God speaks to you or you know there's an area of your life where you need to to do better or improve in that's the time that's him speaking to you being like okay because even in how many times has God spoken to you and we don't do it and then something hits and he told us that as a way to prepare us 
to help us be ready to know how to fight because he doesn't want us living defeated. That's why we have the word so we can live victorious. And so we can, like I said, walk in faith and know how to fight against the enemy, know how to identify the things of the enemy, know how to identify attacks. Because when you think something is coming from God, well, why would you, you're not going to fight him on it. Like if you think God brought you a sickness, why would you ask him to heal you if you think it's God's will? See, that doesn't really make sense. So even to identify the culprit as Satan is the bringer of sickness, death, disease, God can heal. God is a healer. He is a restorer. And so like I said, that's why you want to get, especially in, in, in these times that we're in, be saturated with the word. You need to know the will of God, know what the word says, so you can be able to fight and stand against the enemy. And so like I said, you can build your faith up and just continue living victoriously or start to live, you know, victoriously if this is if this is new to you. Um, know what the promises of God are. Get in the word, like I said, every day. Ask the questions of like who's who's talking, who is he talking to? Um, I remember um last point and then, and then we'll wrap up. I remember um I was reading the scripture one time and I believe it was in Matthew. And it said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And that's the very last scripture, I believe, in that chapter. And I was like, what things? So I went back, and literally three verses up, it says, don't worry about what you will eat, don't worry about what you drink. But even in reading that, I hadn't put the connection of, okay, I'm being told not to worry, and then I'm being told if I seek, you know, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things, what you'll eat, what you drink, what you'll wear, will be added to you. But even in reading it the first time, I missed it. So I had to go to the end and be like, okay, wait, what is he talking about? And then go back and be like, oh, that's what he's talking about. So like I said, that's why it's important to even, you know, when you read something like that, ask me like, wait, wait, wait what, is, what is he talking about here? You know, and it, there's nothing wrong with take notes as you read the word. Highlight things that stand out to you. Write down the things that God says you can have. You know, take notes of that and stand. So when, when Satan comes, you've got the word of God to stand on. And you can, you can fight him back. I said, fight, fight him back. Don't just let him beat up on you. Fight him back in any area of your life. You have that authority with the word of God. Amen. Awesome. Well, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I want to thank you so much for, um, for tuning in. Again, a reminder, tomorrow night is our second night of Saturate. Go to North City Church Facebook page. You do not want to miss it. 7 o'clock. Pray real quick and we're going to be dismissed. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for, for everything that the word says that we can have, Father, and just just who the word who the word says that you are and that we can live victoriously and just fight against the enemy. Father, I pray for every person who who is on, who was listening, Father, that they will take this word to heart, Father, and they will be doers of the word. They will act on it, not just hear it to where it goes one in one ear and out the other, but Father, it will go into their hearts and cause action and that they will begin to be soaked and saturated in your word and they will know your promises father we thank you father and we praise you for for healings and father for anything that anybody is struggling with father we pray for them whether it's finances whether it's healing in their body <clears throat> father we pray for for healing satan we bind you in the name of jesus we cover them with the blood of jesus they are healed right now father for anyone struggling financially, Father, we pray for provision. Father, we thank you that your word says you are our source, not the job, not our government. But Father, you are our source and you take care of your children. Father, we thank you and we just praise you for everything that you're doing. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Again, tomorrow night, North City Church. Facebook page, 7 o'clock. We will see you then. Have a great night.